Welcome to Bit Science. In this video, we will learn the crucial topic of component security in Salesforce Lightning. We'll start with an introduction to the concept, exploring the fundamentals and importance of securing Lightning components. From there, we'll explore into two key security features, Lightning Locker Service and Lightning Web Security. Through a practical example on developer.salesforce.com, we will demonstrate how Lightning Locker Service operates in real-world scenarios. However, we will also address its limitation and explore the broader scope of Lightning Web Security, including virtualization and distortion. We will highlight the advantages of Lightning Web Security over Locker Service, covering its activation, tooling and debugging options. By the end of the video, we will summarize the key points and discuss important questions. Whether you are an experienced developer seeking to broaden your skills or a newcomer eager to delve into Salesforce development, you are in the right spot. Without further delay, let's dive in. Namaste. Welcome to Bit Science. Unlock the secrets of life and technology with our comprehensive biology and Cambridge Science Education. Information about the locker service. Lightning Web Security. What are these two things? Have you heard the term Web Security Lightning Locker before? Lightning Locker introduced after introducing Aura component itself back in 2016 and it was optional for your org for one full year. Now, when we started coding Aura component, that was the time we started working a lot with the JavaScript. And the standard JavaScript objects, classes, properties, methods, and all. Now, that used to uh, let a uh, developer do a lot of activity which they are which they should not. For example, changing the Java, changing the HTML or UI code from the JavaScript. Which is okay and perfectly fine if you do it in any uh, JavaScript application. But when we're talking about component, it is not a good thing considering the security. So here we launched Locker Service and we started, uh, you know, locking your component for any any changes that should not be allowed in your uh, LWC. For example, Locker uh, service is going to uh, let you access your resources privately and it will allow, it will not allow to change your component code outside, you know, external, externally you cannot change the code. So you cannot access any child component uh, from your parent JavaScript and go and change the DOM of the child component. So those kind of changes were not allowed. Okay. Now, to see that, and let's go to L locker console first let's go to the locker console you all can open it as there's no exercise so you don't have any specific time to complete it the locker is enabled and csp as well so if i evaluate this code this is a document create element from javascript we are creating element by the name link storing it into a variable link link rel is import we are assigning that and the same value we are assigning to a new variable by the name rel and we are returning or printing rel so if i click on evaluate here you see what we are getting empty because the locker is on so we are getting blank i'll just put off the locker using this toggle and evaluate it now i'm getting import that's exactly how JavaScript will behave. But if you are going to write this JavaScript in your web component, you will get empty value. So this way you can write any JavaScript code here to evaluate and check, will that work in my Lightning web component or not? 
to know more you know in broader view you can see this locker api viewer locker api viewer shows you which objects are available from a javascript so if you are writing window dot chart it's actually calling secure window dot chart okay so every window document element call that you are performing it's getting converted into secure window secure document secure element call all right so if i want to see which all are supported in the secure window in for our lwc you can choose that and you can come over here to see which all are going to work in my you know system over here okay all of these are working from the windows object similarly secure document you can see which all are supported which methods are supported which methods are not so here you will find plenty of them are supported some of them are not so you can of course choose the one that we uh, you know it's supported over here similarly for the element you can find out the one that's supported only and here you will see all the methods from the javascript that you can call from your lwc so what happens if there is something that's not supported and you type that in your code so there what kind of behavior you will get that you can check in the locker console so if something not supported and if i write that what kind of response i will get so it will give you empty or it will give you error so that you can find out in the locker console the api viewer shows you which api methods are supported in the lwc or ora framework if your locker is enabled now after a year uh, launching in 16 after a year locker is enabled in all org and you cannot disable it so you have to take care of the locker services okay so do we get the idea what is the job of locker service see locker service is basically ensure that you don't call any javascript method which is going to harm the code or any other author's code because you are using lot of code from out of the box like lightning card we don't allow you to change them or you don't want to let other developer change your component code so you have to ensure the isolation the security and everything so for that we have locker service enabled so it's going to lock your component from any unwanted changes number 1 number 2 we can how we perform that how we how do we get that done so in javascript you have three objects window document element we convert all these objects into lwc using secure window secure document and secure element so if you perform any call like windows dot chart it will be wrapped in secure window and then the chart method will be called so if it is allowed even after locker then only the chart will happen otherwise no so locker service is enhancing your code security from any unwanted changes in your application so some advantage of lightning locker it works uh, with a javascript in a strict mode enforcement okay and uh, it let your dom access containment work in a proper place similarly it ensures the csp content security plus policies and uh, it let you know which uh, framework apis are supported okay now after locker service this is the locker console that i already explained to you shown that code now let's look into some real time code that you know your locker service can cannot work first let's say this is the code that you are writing alert this dot template dot query selector and then you said document dot query selector as i said query selector is a method of a javascript but when you say this dot template dot query selector it is okay but if you say document dot query selector same thing it's going to return you 
null. Why? Because this dot template query selector is returning you secure element. But document, if you write document dot query selector, it's not going to return you secure element, but the element. And then we are not allowed to access them or change those elements here. So that shows how it's going to work with or without locker service. Now, after locker service, we added Lightning Web Security. It is uh, I'll say similar to locker service, but bit enhanced. And it's another security architecture. So you can choose one of those. So of course, locker is enabled in your org and web security you can choose to enable or not. But yeah, both of them can uh, work you know, together also, but any alternate security architecture can also be okay. It is a bit advanced compared to Lightning Locker because when we launched Lightning Locker, our concern was mostly Aura component. But with LWS, our uh, coverage is going beyond Aura to LWC. They can work together or they can work with a single one also. That's perfectly okay. So what is additional that you get from uh, LWS? You can import and use Lightning Web Components from different namespaces, okay, via composition or extension. So we are doing that. If you remember navigation, so we did wrap Lightning Element into navigation object, navigation mixin, and we work with that. So that's allowed because of LWS will not stop you to do that. Working with the global object, working with the third party libraries, and also it gives you better performance than Lightning Locker. So web security is a feature of the browser because any browser that supports web component specification, they are going to support web security. You can have uh, different sandbox components running in the same browser wrapped and in the web security, okay? So virtual isolation is provided. And uh, this way, if you know, going to another JavaScript code, changing them, uh, create, generating error because of the change is uh, going to treat as a distortion. Yeah, any question? No, okay. So they are known as distortion. So your Lightning Web Security is going to look for such distortion and report you on that, that this is, this is distorted and this is the output you will, you're gonna get, okay? So distortion is basically uh, the JavaScript code that will be running in your org and uh, it gives some unsafe behavior. It generates some unsafe behavior, but LWS is going to modify them dynamically. So you will not get caught up with the unsafe behavior, but it will just change a bit so that uh, you will not get into error and all that. This known as distortion. Okay. So it's going to change or distort the JavaScript code that's going to give you some unsafe behavior. So that's an advantage of LWS over your Locker service. Locker service will just lock. Null. That's all. But LWS will distort that JavaScript. Remove that unsafe piece of code. So you can enable it in your session settings. Right now we have this option to enable or disable, but not for the locker. Locker is now available, enabled to all org, and you cannot disable it. So it's like a security feature, which is already added. So Lightning Web Security, if you want to see how that works, there is a LWS distortion viewer in the same place where you have the documentations. And you can look into every 
document dot prototype dot release capture how that is going to work how that distortion is going to work then you have this is a the documentation they'll explain everything about it and then you have lws console so for example if this is a new worker that's a code lws is enabled and if i click on evaluate so you'll get to see the error the worker constructor is distorted by the lightning web security it will not let you initialize a new worker instance if i disable it and then i click on evaluate i see success okay not the error but the success so once you see success what you'll do next you'll go deploy and let's start running but at runtime you will see either error different kind of behavior changes that you don't want in your system so you can check the behavior what's going to happen with certain piece of code if i'm going to run so right now it is running on lwc you can click on aura and you can see if i enable lws what i'm going to get same kind of error okay and if i disable and then again i evaluate i'll see the same success so lws is working exactly same for aura component or for lwc component there are certain piece of code that you want to check whether aura will respond to it differently than lightning web component yes you can switch to it and look into it okay so worker object it is disallowed okay it is not allowed in your component you can learn about the worker object and how that uh, impact your javascript code but yes it's uh, right now it's disallowed both in aura and lwc so if you write that code in your component anywhere by mistake or by intention you can evaluate and see whether it will work or it will give you an error so we're clearly going to give you an error that lightning web security error cannot create worker with uh, you know lws here so this is kind of you know ensuring that some piece of javascript is allowed some uh, javascript code changes allowed or not it's just securing your uh, interaction with the platform your uh, lwc interaction with the platform or aura interaction with the platform whether it will go ahead or it will see back so that's where your lwc and your locker both work okay so if you write this code navigator.clipboard.writer text in your locker console with the locker enabled you'll get the error with lws enabled you'll get it success okay but it's going to get distorted so different view with the both the options some of the options work exactly same and some of the options is going to work differently in locker console or lws console all right so if you have a lws enabled the source code debugging would be slightly you know different so if your lws is enabled your component will run in the lws you know influence and uh, this is how the debugging will happen so debugging source will found under the lws node like this here whereas if you're going to work with lws disabled the component will be found in the lightning namespace that is your modules and c not inside lws because lws is disabled by default it is enabled in all org as of winter 23 but you can choose now to disable that also okay that is a possibility at the moment so we can if we have enable uh, lws enabled the source location for all code to debug is lws namespace c if lws is disabled but debug mode is on you'll 
see the sources copied in the lightning and module c lw is enabled but debug mode is disabled you cannot debug it so you have to have debug mode on to debug it okay and if both of them are disabled the content will be in the same place as your lws disabled if you enable your debug mode mode you can debug it easily you can see which method which variable all that very very clearly the way you write so if your method name is go click you will see them go click but the moment you enable debug mode the first thing that get implemented is minified version minified version is going to show every name of the method and property as a minified version like a a like a b so go click will be known as g variable student id will be known as x so it's difficult to understand if the debug mode is disabled that means production mode is on so enable your debug mode if you are still coding working and investing to understand investing your time to understand the code so that's your lws and locker service is anybody how you can you can call a getter so if public property is changing the getter will automatically be called from a ui to change the value another one is uh, you can check if public property is changing call a public method so there are the two ways to ensure that dynamically calling method if value of public property is changing okay so use uh, either dollar attribute in a wired service so that's going to invoke that logic again but that's mostly a data retrieval but if it has to be a custom logic when the public property is changing use getter for that public property value so the getter will be invoked with its own custom logic if the property public property that is passed in the getter setter is changing list three ways a parent component can communicate with the child component uh, we can call the public method of the child component from the parent component public then, method okay right that's one then like we can use uh, at the rate uh, api decorator uh, uh, okay public properties all right the, yeah and uh, we can also use slots yes very good slots okay next question is if you allow list a domain in uh, csp trusted sites you can load resources from that domain using the script tag is it true or false reuse the reusability is going to be available to you one of course service component another one would be your static resource yes, yes. yeah so your javascript code can come and you can reuse it in multiple places your um, css can come and you can use that also in a multiple places all right every lightning web component has an unnamed slot is it true or false every lightning web component has an unnamed slot okay. neither named slot nor unnamed slot okay. you have to create them as a named or unnamed in the component then only it will be available okay nothing available out of the box so every component can have unnamed slot if you don't want to keep keep them uh, named slot you can give them unnamed slot if you want to get the values or messages or information or data into a specific place you can create the slot there named one or unnamed one but you have to create one how does salesforce determine the locale for logged in user how does salesforce determine the locale for logged in user you can simply use lighting formatted tag they are going to take care of logged in current currently logged in user so they see who is the currently logged in user and from that they'll find out the locale of the 
Salesforce. Okay. Now you can create another comp challenge. So we have this is as a fourth challenge. Now this time you are going to build a line chart the way we built a bar chart and data will not come from uh, Apex code. The data will come from an endpoint that is mentioned in the challenge page of your exercise guide. And you can use that endpoint to grab the data and use that data to build a line chart. So you will be using fetch the fetch API that I showed you in the slide and uh, the data will come from the CSP trusted site. So you have to enable the CSP trusted site in your scratch org. Then you have to pull it in your VS code. After that, you will build your component in the JavaScript. You will mention the fetch, point the endpoint there, as a parameter to the fetch. Then you will be calling your, uh, you'll be getting the data. So JSONify that data. In a second, then you can use that data to build the line chart. And there you have it. We have covered a wide range of topics related to component security and Salesforce Lightning. Stay tuned for more tutorials and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching and happy coding.